You are listening to Keystone Stock Talk Podcast, episode 132. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for stopping by. This podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at www.keystocks.com. Come back often, and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or on iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter at Keystocks and on Facebook or via our 24-hour streaming radio station, pennystocks.fm. And keep submitting your stocks via the usual social channels or at our website, keystocks.com, for our Your Stock Our Take segment. And we just might review your stock in an upcoming show and let you know if it is a buy, sell, or hold. To start this week, we highlight a couple stars from our coverage universe. The first, Sangoma Technologies Corporation, symbol STC on the TSX Venture, a communications as a service or CAS solution for businesses of all sizes. This past week, the company made a $437 million U.S. transformational acquisition of star to star Communications, a top 10 vendor of cloud communication solutions in North America. After resuming trading on Monday, the stock has jumped 35% in two days from 387 to 520. Sangoma was recommended to clients just over three years ago at 72 cents and now has gained over 630%. So congratulations to all clients out there who own the stock. The second star of the work week is CRH, Medical Corporation, symbol CRH on the TSX, which saw its stock jump 80% yesterday after it was announced Well Health would acquire the business. In our Your Stock, Our Take segment, we take a look at Power Band Solutions, Inc., symbol PBX on the TSX Venture. The company is a fintech provider which offers an integrated cloud-based transaction platform facilitating transactions amongst consumers, dealers, funders, and manufacturers. It enables them to essentially buy, sell, trade, finance, and lease new and used electric or non-electric vehicles on any phone, tablet, PC, or connect any device connected to the internet. Finally, Aaron Dunn will look at GameStop Corp, symbol GME on the New York Stock Exchange, and the phenomenon that is Wall Street Bets. Wall Street Bets and its form or subreddit on the popular website Reddit drove GameStop to dizzying heights on a massive short squeeze, only to see the struggling business predictably crater. Now, we look at whether GameStop is even worth it, this at its current price or its current price, and just take a look at the entire situation. So I'm going to welcome my co-hosts, Brennan and Aaron. How are you guys doing? Good, good. It's I'm doing well. Great to be back. I can't believe we good. were away for so long. What, what I was know. It, three well, weeks? We did our big prediction show, and then we had to put our head just down and get some work done there. That one was right. really well listened to, by the way. But we've had a busy past week, and we got a busy current week ahead of us. Uh, we participated in a couple of conferences virtually, obviously, the World Outlook being the largest of them and gave uh, three or four speeches over that time. Uh, the World Outlook uh, was well attended virtually, again, uh, and uh, we had some really positive feedback in the talks at the event. They're very enjoyable, as always. Uh, it was good to see, uh, talk to, so now we're talking to a bunch of uh, Outlook attendees. We typically talk to hundreds at the event. And there's, you know, hundreds of our clients are already there, but now we're doing some little 10 minute segments to exclusively for the world outlook uh, segment. I think I had seven or eight uh, 10 minute meetings this morning already. So busy day today, busy day all week. It looks like we will have uh, talking to clients, but we're also looking at some new research to get out there. So you got to fit that in as we go. Definitely. It's a little bit like a Tetris game, fitting it all in, right? <laughs> I feel like that today with yeah. the 10-minute <laughs> slots. I know I'm, I'm doing 10 minutes of work, talking to a client for 12 minutes or a potential client, and then fitting in some work. Uh, it's not typically like that. We typically get 70-plus percent of our day to just do research. But, you know, it's a unique time, unique, uh, 
unique set and a unique opportunity to talk to a lot of investors out there. And uh, it does look like a lot of those investors are taking that opportunity. So it's good to see that uh, it's good to feel wanted, right? Like everybody wants to talk to us. It, it's kind of nice to, to talk to someone that's other than Ryan and Aaron, to be completely honest, because uh, ah, I mean, I'm stuck uh, in my apartment. Ryan's just not let's, used let's be Ryan honest. You've had one meeting. Okay, so. to talk to him, I've had so. a couple meetings. For him, it's, it's just it's something very new. I'm just kidding. Except Brennan's you, had an impressive amount of meetings. I think his voice has been on the podcast and people want to talk to him now. Yeah. You know, it's a they, voice they for underst- radio, a face. I'm not sure what it's for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For radio, for radio, face for radio. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're an attractive young man. Aaron tells me all the time. So don't worry. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't even know what we're saying anymore. But no, it was a busy. It looks like it's going to be a busy week for the rest of it. It was great to you know, talk to some people at the Outlook over the course of the past couple of days. We'll see. We'll talk to them there, and you know, we virtually talk to them through a monitor. Um, you know, thousands of them. So it was great, and uh, we'll see if we can make you money over the next uh, next year, as we did over the course of this past year. So let's get right into some of the companies. Anybody else want to talk about anything else before we get into these companies? No, uh, I think good? we have a pretty full, uh, full Shall segment. We? So why don't we get yeah, into we it? And I know what in my in my dog, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's been going on in the market. So that's good. Yeah, we'll we'll expand on that. Uh, now the the star from our stars and dog segment. It's time for this week's star star. star. There's a couple of them this week, but the first we're going to talk about is Sangoma Technologies Corporation, STC on the TSX Venture. Today's trading around $5.20, $717 million market cap now. Sangoma is a vendor of communication products and services delivered on-premise and now primarily in the cloud. Its product offering includes UCAS, SIP trunks, collaborative services, and PBXs. Now, firstly, what I'd like to say, and it's great when we see this, is just congrats to all clients that have owned this stock. Sangoma was recommended just over three years ago to clients at $0.72, cents, and many times since it's been a focus buy in our Canadian small cap and growth stock coverage. It was halted this last week as the company reported what we call a transformational acquisition, a $437 million U.S. acquisition of Star to Star Communications. Star to Star is ranked as a top 10 vendor of cloud communication solutions across North America. Now, after resuming trading on Monday, the stock jumped 35% in just two days from 387 to 520. Like I said, Sangoma has now returned 630% plus in the last three years. Tremendous gains driven by tremendous growth in this business. A lot of acquisition-related growth here, and the latest acquisition was its biggest and changed the company. Star to Star came at a high price tag, however. Sangoma did play 30 times EBITDA for the business, but it appears to have triggered a couple of positive dynamics which have boosted the stock. Number one, there's in, it increases the overall SaaS revenue in the business. That SaaS or consistent recurring revenue that you see that's highly predictable going forward. Number two, Sangoma's client and revenue base have uh, given now that with this acquisition in the fold, uh, the business to a new scope. And now both these things appear to be producing a re-rating higher in terms of what the market is willing to pay for the stock. So in conclusion, we have updated clients on the stock, and if management executes over the next few years, there continues to be longer-term growth potential in the business. Uh, It's strong gains, however, the past two days, year, and three years since our recommendation makes Sangoma our star of the week. Well, good good job on that, both uh, the discussion there and the initial recommendation. I know that it's... um it's a company you've been recommending to clients for a while. So I wanted to touch on, Ryan, you'd mentioned 30 times earnings for this business and that that's kind of expensive. How do you see the accretion working out for this deal? Well, I mean, it, you know, I think it, it, I mean, it is a profitable business they bought. It's, it's, you know, it's, they, you know, you don't love to see when a business buys another business for more than it's trading at in the market, but you are seeing a re-rating here. Now, you really have to start valuing it based on like if you look at now it's not a direct competitor of say Ring Central right but Ring Central is a unified communications provider um, it you know it now in terms of revenue 
still Sangoma is significantly lower, but it's starting to creep up on a business with this acquisition uh, in terms of where it is in the ballpark of Ring Central. But like a Ring Central listed on the uh, NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange in the US trades for a $38 billion market cap, whereas Sangoma is still under a billion at 700, and that's 38 billion US. So we're talking 720 million US on Sangoma in Canada. Uh, again, not to the size and scope, but this acquisition really puts them in the top 10, if not you know closer to the top or en- upper end of the unified communication companies in North America. So we do believe uh, it should have a re-rating in terms of uh, the valuation. Uh, right now, you know, we can't tell you what we have a rating on it for our existing clients, but again, what really what we're looking at is just the incredible performance that Sangoma has put in in terms of growing its revenues and cash flows over the past three, four years that have really driven this company to a whole new level and provided tremendous gains for our clients. And that's what we like to see in the businesses that we look for. If you can add, you know, we're looking at 15 to 25 stocks. If more of those stocks have a profile like Sangoma's, you know, if you look at where they were in 2017 in terms of total revenue, 26.8 million, 2018, 57, 2019, 109, 2020, 131, a significant jump from this acquisition again this year. So that is what you like to see more profitable over time. You know, those are the type of businesses that we like to add for our clients in our portfolio. Not every one of those will perform over time, but you're going to, you add, the more you add with a profile like that, the better your portfolio returns will be, we believe, over the long term. And that's what, again, we're trying to do for our clients. Now, I'm just going to also point out another star this week. From our Stars and Dogs segment, it's time for this week's Star. 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 This is a company that's been in our portfolio for a while. It was at a hold, but um, uh, it's CRH Medical Corporation, symbol CRH on the TSX. It announced this week it will be acquired by Well Health Technologies. It's an approximate 80% premium. Uh, We welcome the strong gains in the stock. We had currently, like I said, ranked as a hold. We'll likely advise to take the offer and advise clients to deploy capital in some new names that we have released recently as buy recommendations over the past month or so, and some other new names that we're looking at closely over the coming weeks. Regardless, that 80% jump in CRH just in one day makes it our second star of the week. So we're going to move on to our, um, our Your Stock, Our Take. It's time we answer a question on Your Stock in a little segment we like to call Your Stock, Our Take. Buy, sell, or hold. Brennan, that is on Power Band Solutions, PBX on the TSX Venture, an emerging company. Uh, you're going to take that one away. I am. Yeah, so this uh, actually came in from Daryl via email, and I told him that I would cover it for him. Uh, so it's currently trading at a price of $0.65. Cents. It has a market cap of $67.35 million. Uh, and Powerband Solutions is a technology company that has developed a web-based vehicle auction, remarketing, leasing, and finance service and software programs for automotive dealers and consumers. Uh, and just to catch you up to speed on the company, in November of 2018, the company entered into a 50-50 joint venture agreement with a D2D Auto Auctions, an online auction remarketing platform in the U.S. And this summer, uh, or sorry, in July of 2019, the company acquired a 60% stake in Musa Holdings, a new and used vehicle leasing platform in the U.S. So I just wanted to say that, you know, just to show how they're trying to scale here. Now, a few more key points is uh, this summer, the company announced that its partner D2D Auto Auction had reached an agreement with a U.S. national car retailer to purchase used vehicles on D2D's virtual auction platform. Uh, And as well, the Royal Administration Services, Inc., a provider of automotive insurance products across the United States, will be recommending dealers use the power band virtual transaction platform for drivers and dealers. Now, looking at the company's most recent 
uh, financial performance. Uh, the company hasn't actually reported its fiscal 2020 year end results yet, but management has provided a brief press release stating that revenue was up 138% sequentially. So that's over the third quarter of 2020 to approximately 795,000. And this would mean that trailing 12 month revenue was approximately 2.38 million up almost 19% from the 2019 fiscal year. And looking at the company's profitability, it is still losing money with the company making mention that for the 2020 fiscal year, it will post an adjusted loss of about 9.6 million. And uh, just a, a price to sales valuation here. Currently, the stock is trading with a PE multiple of about 28 times, which is very expensive. Uh, and, you know, looking at this multiple, it seems that the market is pricing in some serious growth going forward. Uh, now, looking at the balance sheet, uh, the last available financial statements, which were actually released, are from Q3 of 2020. And at that time, Powerband had a net debt and lease position of approximately $7.5 million, and working capital was a deficit of $1.8 million. So I would say that the company's balance sheet isn't too flattering. Now, looking at growth going forward, the company recently announced the private placement where Powerbound will issue 18.3 million shares at a price of 29 cents per share for gross proceeds of 5.3 million, with these funds expected to support the company's continual development, growth, market expansion, and for general working capital purposes. Now, taking into consideration the company's balance sheet, which I just described above, makes sense why the company would be raising funds as they are not profitable and do not have great uh, have a great financial position at this time and looking forward uh, management said that they expect to launch uh, in Canada in Q2 of 2021 and Australia in Q3 of 2021 so there are some possible growth catalysts that will come into 2021 but management hasn't provided any financial guidance so it is very difficult to quantify the possible growth going forward and just to sum it all up to conclude here Powerbound Solutions has a decently attractive product offering of cloud-based solutions for the automotive industry and has shown good revenue growth over the past quarter. But the downsides to the company are its lack of profitability, its expensive valuation of almost 28 times revenue, and a balance sheet with quite a bit of borrowing on it, all while needing to raise funds to support growth and manage the health of its balance sheet. Now, because of these issues that uh, I have listed, it's not a name that we would recommend at this time, but certainly one that we would like to continue to watch uh, and, and see how you know the, the growth continues, especially as the company launches into Canada and Australia in Q2 and Q3 of 2021. Good, good summary. So, I mean, the thing that obviously pops out to me is a, a company that doesn't have profitability but does have debt on the balance sheet. So one of the things we always look at, regardless of the company, is the balance sheet, of course. We don't wanna to see too much debt leverage. Ideally, we wanna see net cash, although that's not always gonna be an option, depending on the industry, but certainly sensitive about the debt leverage. But for me, if a company's not making any money, then really no debt leverage is acceptable because how are they paying the interest or how would they make? Principal payments can be made by refinancing the debt, certainly, but how are they how are they paying the interest? So if you're not even able to pay the interest from cash flow or profitability, uh, then you're essentially borrowing more debt to pay off interest and I don't or issuing shares and I don't uh, I don't see that as a as a viable strategy. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, certainly the growth there, you know, especially in those pre-announced numbers, which are a little murky to look at, but um, the growth there looks intriguing. You know, the cloud-based transaction platform kind of disrupting that sector. It's all intriguing. Uh, we would expect, because there is some debt there, uh, potentially a financing uh, coming with the business. Uh, the stock price has done re quite well of late and taking advantage of that in the market. So I would potentially look out for that. That's no specific insight into business, but it might be a good time to issue and uh, take advantage of the price rise that has come there and get some cash, clean up that balance sheet, and maybe if they're looking for further acquisitions. Now, let's move on to what would be the topic du jour. From our Stars and Dog segment, it's time for this week's Dog. <laughs> 
the uh, GameStop situation with Wall Street bets. Aaron's going to take a swing at that right now. I will. I will make an attempt. So as Ryan said, this week I have GameStop as our dog. GameStop uh, is a very topical company right now. Um, anyone following the market has heard the names GameStop and Wall Street bets a lot over the last couple of weeks. Uh, what's been happening specifically with this stock, with this company, is really a reflection, I think, of what's been happening in many areas of the market. So GameStop right now is a $3.4 billion market cap company. It's trading for $49 per share. And what they do is they call themselves a multi-channel video game consumer electronics and services retailer. They have operations in North America and Europe and Australia. So some background. GameStop was recently the most shorted stock on the U.S. stock market. About 130% of, it is, of its outstanding shares were sold short. How do you short more shares than actually exist? Well, the answer to that question is probably a podcast segment unto itself. I'll just say that the ability to sell short more than 100% of a company's outstanding shares is completely ridiculous and unnecessary from a regulatory perspective. In any event, hedge funds were very negative on this company and for good reason. GameStop is a retailer of video games and who buys physical video games anymore? The answer is not many people. So GameStop was seen as an archaic business and the company's financial performance fully supported this thesis. It was not doing well financially. GameStop's revenues have been in decline over the past five years. They are losing money. So hedge, hedge funds did what they do when they don't like a company. They shorted it severely. Enter Wall Street Bets. Wall Street Bets is a discussion forum on a very popular website called Reddit. Wall Street Bets has millions of followers, and the focus of this forum is on speculating in stocks and derivatives like options. The influencers on Wall Street Bets saw an opportunity to make money in GameStop and some other severely shorted stocks. And this was not based on any knowledge of the companies or their respective markets. Being savvy speculators, these influencers knew that when someone shorts a stock and the, sh and the stock price moves up, that the shorter has to keep making payments to the brokerage firm to help make up for the difference. This can be very expensive. Often it forces short sellers to cover their shorts, which basically means buying back the shares and returning them to their owners thus exiting the short position. That short covering or buying has the impact of pushing the share price higher and forcing more short sellers to cover. With over 100% of the outstanding shares shorted, Wall Street Bets influencers knew that there was a lot of potential buying of shares that would happen if they could start forcing short sellers to cover their positions. And that's what they did. They instructed the followers of the forum to buy shares of GameStop in order to manipulate the share price higher, force short sellers to cover, which would in turn push the share price higher still. And this was effective. What we saw was GameStop share price move from about $18 at the start of January to over $350 by the end of the month. Most of this move up took place in just a couple of days. And they didn't just do it to GameStop. Many highly shorted stocks were also targeted, including BlackBerry. Hedge funds generally use a lot of leverage, and they were not anticipating this kind of activity. It really took them by surprise. For some of these funds, the recent events have been catastrophic. For any hedge fund or short seller, these events, at the very least, have them reviewing, until now, the unforeseen risks of their investment strategy. GameStop's GameStop's price peaked on January 27th at about $350. Since then, it's declined 85% just in the past two weeks. Other stocks are showing similar moves. BlackBerry doubled in price in the matter of days, and then just as quickly, the share price was again cut in half. There's a lot of chatter about what this means for the stock market and the hedge fund industry and whether or not Wall Street bets influencers should, what they did should be considered criminal market manipulation. My take on this is that it is mostly is that it's just really ridiculous. 
None of this has anything to do with real investing. It's something that Keystone would stay far away from. And we advise the vast majority of investors to do the same, stay far away from these types of activities. I personally have very little sympathy for the hedge funds and the short sellers. They like to play the game of the market. That's not investing. They like the game. And in this scenario, they came out on the losing end. With respect to market manipulation, I don't. I can't really comment on uh, on the legal definition and whether or not what Wall Street bets influencers did uh, is actually legally market manipulation. But I can say that this is really just what short sellers have been doing and getting away with for many years. They take short positions in companies, then they distribute uh, very inflammatory reports on those companies in the hope that this will cause investors to sell on fear, on fear. In many cases, the allegations that short sellers make are not falsifiable or credible, and they're really just intended to cast doubt on the company. To be clear though, I don't think that what Wall Street bets or what professional short sellers are doing is good for the market. In fact, this is exactly the kind of thing that distracts investors from the true purpose of the markets, and it erodes confidence, both from investors who put their capital at risk, but also from quality companies that are considering listing on the stock market and looking at some of the potential outcomes. The only thing that we can do at Keystone is stay far away from these kinds of activities, and we once again advise investors to do the same. With respect to GameStop as an investment, we would not touch the company right now. Financially, it is not doing well, and that's what we're looking at. There's nothing I can see tangibly from the company right now that justifies an investment. Definitely not. Yeah, I think that's an excellent summary. Um, I think it put it succinctly and uh, we come at it from our perspective too. And just, uh, you know, the, the only thing that I would add is, you know, part of this Wall Street Brats is also just an anti-establishment screw Wall Street and the big hedge funds. And, you know, they took advantage of a high short position, like you said. I mean, from a financial perspective, it was smart. And it may, one thing it may do is change the way hedge funds have to operate in some respects. They can be totally right on a short, which they likely were in this case, and get crushed if a movement such as Wall Street Best pushes against one of these severe short positions. So there'll have to be some protection uh, or they will not be able to enter in short positions to that degree uh, because you can, again, you can be totally right and uh, get crushed. So, you know, it's giving them a taste of their own medicine in some respects. I, I, like you and, said. I, and I have absolutely no sympathy. Um, you know, on, no. on the other side, I would agree with you. There's, there's definitely an anti-establishment uh, element to the movement here. And I think that Wall Street bets, the, the influencers have really taken advantage of that. The narrative that we're hearing mm-hmm. is that this is a story of the common investor standing up against the, the evil hedge fund industry. <laughs> Yeah, when, I'm not sure. Yeah, when in reality, completely. like like these influencers who are the ones that are that are um, that are pushing this forward and making millions of dollars, they're not common investors. They're 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 just as much the establishment, in my opinion, as the hedge funds. They're just they're just uh, masquerading as as common people. So um, that being said, I don't well, actually. I, I read an the, article the, about Elon Elon Musk becoming the anti-establishment hero in the GameStop. Saga. I mean, he's one of the richest men on the planet. He's the I mean, richest man on the planet. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, so are we? I guess he's uh, anti. He qualifies as anti-establishment. I mean, you could say some of the things he does, but I think he promotes himself incredibly well. I think that's one of yeah. the things. And, he and does this could be well. once again an entire segment. This could be an entire podcast about oh, how yeah. how you know populist <laughs> leaders. Often, you know, could we talk about there was one that uh, won a presidential election in the <laughs> I States? I don't know if we want to open up on... that Pandora's box at this point. <laughs> we, but... don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, th- I think that what does that end our show this week? I think it was a great show. I think we went over a lot of topics there, talked about some good companies, uh, talked about two companies, you know, one company primarily in Sangoma that's made our clients a boatload of money over the past three years and done it because they produced strong 
financial performance. That's what we're looking to provide for clients in their portfolios, 15 to 25 stocks that continue to grow, grow underlying cash flow, have good management teams, and uh, produce strong returns over the long term. And that's what we're looking to do. So hopefully 2021 will be the year that you start building your portfolio, take control and do that this year. We're going to have some announcements on some upcoming seminars coming up uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, Not seminars over the next few weeks, but announcements on those. So we'll get to those in shows coming up. But we'll look forward to talking to you again next week. Uh, keep your questions coming into our Your Stock, Our Take. We're going to do a couple debates on individual companies. So if you want us to debate two stocks in the same industry, uh, we can do that over the next couple shows. Again, I wish you all out there profitable investing. Thank you. Profitable investing. Thanks, everyone.